Genshin Impact has a tendency to release characters that sort of replace past characters. This is most commonly done to 1.0 characters once they've been outshone by other characters, leading them to be considered not as good as they were, or even in some extreme cases, bad. Examples of this happening are Barbara with Kokomi, Diluc with Hu Tao, Noelle with Zhongli, and Amber with... well, everyone. However, there are some that still hold their own, even all these updates later. For example, Bennett is still one of the best buffers in the game, Zhengling is still an amazing sub DPS, and Xingqiu is one of the best and easiest to get Hydro Pliers in the game. Yes, Yelan and Farina are better, but they're both a lot harder to get than Xingqiu. While he's great, he's not really a main DPS, so that makes me curious. Can Xingqiu do everything on his own with how good he is? Because I'm stupid, I'm gonna answer that question. Here are the rules. I can only use Xingqiu in battle. Any puzzles that require another element can be completed with another character. No healing items in battle, no co-op, and all swords are allowed. Now let's see if you can beat Genshin Impact using only Xingqiu. Just like Sayu only, I don't have the footage of me pulling Xingqiu, but when I did, I got both Xingqiu and Sacrificial Sword, which is one of his best weapons. First thing we need to do is the three domains. For Amber's domain, we skip it by platforming around the domain to glide to the Door of Resurrection to skip the Pyro Monument. Kai's domain was simpler than Amber's because we just had to beat some easy enemies and jump over the spikes. We do some more platforming around in Lisa's domain to skip some more mandatory non-hydro monuments and with that act 1 is over. Now we need to get to AR-10 to start act 2. I'll find that this is a good time to talk about Xingqiu's pros and cons. We'll start with the pros. Xingqiu's elemental skill is quite strong and it generates a lot of particles for a burst. The burst itself is an A plus burst. It gives constant hydro application and constant hydro damage, and it has a long uptime. At Ascension Phase 1, he can also heal himself. It's not a great heal, but it's passable. We'll go more into that heal once we unlock it. But what about the cons? His elemental skill has a long cooldown of 20 seconds, and his burst has a recharge requirement of 80, which isn't bad in a team because you'll probably have Sacrificial Sword and an ER Sands to get his burst faster, but that won't cut it in a solo challenge, so it's going to be harder to get that burst. His normal attacks are also just kind of average as well. I also would have preferred if his ascension stat was either energy recharge or hydro damage bonus instead of just attack percent. The passive talent that he starts with also won't come in handy a lot during this playthrough. I might have listed more positives than negatives here, but some of the negatives are just nitpicks and the positive are really positive. The best way to get to AR-10 for this air grind is just random exploring in Mondstadt. I mainly collect chests, get animoculi, and complete handbook challenges to get to AR-10. Doing these gets us to AR-10 in no time, and we get a free 10 pull from reaching AR-10, as well as a lot of primo jumps to use from exploration. Singjo Constellation. Singjo Constellation. Singjo Constellation. Singjo Constellation. Singjo Constellation. That's not Singjo. That's a that's a feral guy. Singjo Constellation. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? This is not helpful. This is helpful! Maybe. <gasps> a 5 star weapon and a sing joke. There's no way. What? We can ignore her, but what? I don't even know what to say at this point. Not only do we get a Singcho constellation, but we also got a 5 star weapon that Singcho can use. You might be thinking a kill of Havonia is not as good as Sacrificial Sword, but I'd say that in a solo challenge, a kill of Havonia is better because it both has better base attack and can increase the power of our normal, charge, and plunge attacks with its physical damage bonus substat. And C1 Singcho honestly isn't that good of a constellation, but I'll take it just for the insane luck of getting it. I got both of these things in the first 2 hours of playing. Now we can start Act 2. We meet the trap and then go to Windrise to fight the Eye of the Storm. I accidentally used my elemental skill before starting this fight, so it took a bit longer than it probably should have. We steal the Holy Liar from the Cathedral and meet Diluc. We go to the Fatui hideout soon after and it was a pretty simple and easy domain. The agent at the end was launched for most of the fight which made the fight easy. Next we need to find 3 teardrop crystals and the first one is locked behind a ruin guard. Something that I intend to do in the near future is power up ourselves, because our burst is not very strong right now. Even though we had it for a good amount of the fight, it didn't deal a crazy amount to the Rune Guard. The rest of its HP was just slowly taken down. Next was the Domain. The Rain Swords around Singcho when you use his elemental skill can apply Hydro, which made taking down the Pyro Abyss Mage's shield easy. 
The last one requires us to open a chest, and now we can summon Devalin. Did I jump scare you? Yeah, I bet I did. You coward. You make me sick. That's the end of Act 2. After doing some commissions, we can do a ten pull. Singcho Constellation. Singcho Constellation. Singcho Constellation. Singcho Constellation. Singcho Constellation. Oh, but another... another sword? And a hot man, but the sword. Now we need to get to AR-18 to start Act 3. I decided to go to Liu at this point to do some more exploration. I primarily opened up teleport waypoints, opened chests, and did a few world quests. We reach AR-15 by doing this, so that means we can ascend Singcho and get our healing passive. What this passive talent does is after you use your elemental skill, the rain swords that spawn around you will also have healing properties when you get hit or after they've been out for about 15 seconds. The world quests we do are Luhua Landscapes, Treasure Lost, Treasure Found, and The Tree Who Stands Alone. Those get us a surplus of experience, but going into this challenge I knew exactly what the hardest enemy would be. No, it's not the Hydro Abyss Mage. No, it's not even the Hydro Abyss Herald. It is the Oceanid. I think everybody assumed this either way. The thing about this fight is that most of it's not actually that bad. Sure, the Hydro Mimics can deal a lot of damage and some can even heal themselves, but so can we with our passive and Aquila Favonius passive, where if we get a hit, it will not only deal damage based on our attack, but it will also heal you. So it doesn't sound that bad, right? Just go through that for 5 phases and you're all good. Well, that would be true if it weren't for these fuckers. The Raptor Hydro Mimic is impossible for us to defeat in time. Period. When they swoop down, we have to be pretty much perfect with our slash time to even hit them. But even if we do, it does such a minuscule amount of damage that it doesn't matter. You might also be thinking, just do it long enough so you defeat all of them. And there's two flaws with that. One. It's very precise, so that alone rules it out. Two, if you take too long during the fight, a raging vortex will appear and kill you. With the rules I have, the only way to not be killed by it is using your iframes from your burst, if you even have it. So how will I defeat it? I mean, I could just keep doing the fight until the raptor mimic doesn't appear, but that's extremely improbable. It did work here, but that's probably not going to be a strategy that's going to work for long. Two, 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 two. Yes! Yes! Attack percent! Finally, I get to get rid of this garbage two-star effect. Next time we need to fight it, we'll definitely have to formulate a better strategy to defeat them. About an hour and a half of Liwa exploration later, we reach Air 18, and now we can start Act 3. For the Hydro Abyss Mage at the entrance to Storm Terror's lair, we could use the Cryo Flower to permanently freeze it so we didn't have to deal with taking down its shield. Inside Storm Terror's lair, we need to activate three light actuators, and the only one with combat was easy because of the Abyss Mage was Pyro. Now it's time for Devalin, which was an easy one phase fight. That's the end of Monster Act 3. Now we need to get to Era 23 to start Liyue. I think the best way of getting experience at this point will be commissions and the quests that I haven't done yet. Those include Kaya's Story Quest, Amber's Story Quest, Lisa's Story Quest, and the Chi of Yore World Quest in Liyue. Doing all these gets me to AR-22, so I explored the three ruins near Liyue Harbor to get the rest of the experience I needed to get to AR-23. Now I can start Liyue Act 1. Rex Lapis dies, and now I need to go tell the Adepti about his death. First is Mooncarver. Because of his buff, we were able to have infinite uptime for our burst, which as I've said is the best part about our kit. Next is Mountain Shaper, and we had to break most of the amber to find this guy's brother, but once we did, we're off to Cloud Retainer to give her some food. When we got into our domain, we were able to skip it by climbing on this tree and jumping off. Last is Zhao. We already had our burst going into the Rune Hunter fight, so it was really easy. That's the end of Act 1. We need to get to AR-25, but that's really easily done by just doing Deluxe story quests, Hi. and Razor story quests, and some domains for talents. No doubt in my mind that without talent levels, Arch Singcho's damage will fall behind eventually. That's what happened with Dory, so I'm expecting the same thing to happen with Singcho. Now we're at era 25 and we can do the ascension domain, which is just a bunch of hilly trolls that were quickly destroyed. Now we can start act 2 of Liwa. We meet the guy who gets shipped with everyone and then go to Monsat to boil some rocks. There were more hilly trolls and the only one that caused some annoyance was the Geo Summit troll, which I couldn't knock down very easily. Next is Madame Ping's teapot. Almost none of the slimes gave me any trouble. Not even the Hydra slimes. It was only the Cryo Slime and its shield that gave me trouble. Later at the Guizhong Ballista, we have to fight some treasure hoarders. It was another pretty easy fight. 
The two nerds have dinner, and that's the end of Act 2. Now we need to get to AR-18 to start Liwa Act 3. The Fish. I fish! I started doing more random exploration and commissions, but then I remembered I needed to fight Oceanid for when I reach AR-30. As I stated last time, I need to come up with a better way to defeat these Raptor Hydro Mimics, but what could possibly defeat them? Well, remember what I was talking about with Aquila Favonius passive? That's actually how we're going to defeat them. The thing that sucks about this is that it can only hit every 12 seconds, but when it does hit, it deals quite a lot of damage. This plan isn't foolproof though, and if it doesn't hit a crit a few times, we'll probably get hit by the Raging Vortex. If we don't have our burst for the Raging Vortex, we're screwed. I also had to fight it four times because it kept on giving me one drop, and every time I fought her, she always spawned the Raptor Mimics. When we reach AR-13 and we have to fight Oceanid again, that is the last time I'm doing it. I am not doing it for AR-40. Either way, after this, we do the story quest for the star of the show, Sing Cho, but before continuing the grind, I have to do the Lantern Run event. Not only can I get another Sing Cho constellation, I can also get his outfit for free. So I do pretty much the bare minimum of what I have to do, and that gets us both of what we want. Singjo just stole Farina's drip, and he looks ten times better in it too. We top off our AR by doing some Cecilia Garden, and now we can start Act 3. We activate the animal mechanism with Heizo, and then go to the Guizhong Ballista to fight the Millith. With the power of his new drip, we destroy them. Later we sing to some flowers for Zhongli, and they turn out to be Wap flowers. Even though we apply Hydro to ourselves with our elemental skill and we're nearby water, we never got frozen. Now it's time for Child. If you can believe it, the hardest part of this fight was actually Phase 1. Even though he also resists Hydro in Phase 3, it's the worst to use it in Phase 1. If you do attack him with Hydro, he'll use a counter move that'll absolutely destroy you, so for Phase 1 I only normal attacked. Outside of that phase, it was nothing special. Osa is next, and do you ever expect this fight to be difficult? That's the end of Liyue, and here's our reward! Okay. I am Chi Chi. I'm aware, I am Chi Chi. A zombie. Hey, if you twist it a certain way, they're basically the same person. Now we need to get to AR-30 to start in Azuma. We also have to do the Daneslift quest, which will basically be our ticket to AR-30. Both of these quests are pretty simple, just a bunch of Abyss enemies. The only enemy that gives us trouble is the Hydro Abyss Herald, and by trouble, I mean oh my god kill me. They take pretty much no damage from our normal attacks, which is our only way of hitting them once they get their shields. They're also always attacking or moving, so you can never get a good amount of hits on them. The final Abyss Herald fight took 6 minutes for me to complete, which felt like a week. Outside of that, there's not much to talk about for these quests except for Sing Cho having this pissed off look at Barbara for some reason. Maybe he just hates other Hydro characters from 1.0 or something. Now we can start the Inazuma Prologue quest, and this is pretty easy. The only enemies are slimes and treasure hoarders, which don't put up much of a fight. Now we can go to Inazuma to start Act 1. The first part of the quest is a bunch of running around in Rito, but once we're done with that, we can start the transport mission. It was just a bunch of treasure hoarders and Ronin, which are pretty easy to deal with. A while later, we have to break somebody out of jail while fighting the Tenryo Commission. If some random bookworm from Liyue can defeat your military, you've got something seriously wrong with your military. That's the end of Act 1, and now I need to complete Aika's and Yoimiya's story quest to start Act 2. And there's no point in going over this, so let's skip to Act 2. Act 2 starts with us fighting the Raiden Shogun. No part of this fight was even remotely difficult. When we have her element, we destroy her very quickly, and when we don't, we still destroy her. Next, we need to save the Virgin from two Tenryo Commission soldiers, and they were both destroyed. At the resistance camp, we need to do the archery demonstration, but we couldn't do this, so we just called in another nerd of Tevat. We took down the Terror Commission soldiers that stormed into the resistance camp pretty fast, and next were the fights at the front line. It honestly made me laugh how easy all three of these fights were. That's the end of Act 2. Act 3 starts with us clearing the Ronin around Watatsumi Island. Something I've been realizing is that we only ever struggle when the enemies relate to Hydro. The two hardest enemies in this challenge are Hydro Abyss Heralds and the Oceanid. The former is rare, and the latter... Well, the latter sucks, but we can't do much about that. Later on we have to trigger three Electro Monuments, but we're too wet to do that, so we'll bring back the other nerd. The Electro Launch Roll that appears is swiftly defeated. Soon after we have to do the Delusion Factory, and a good way to describe this domain was a lawnmower through grass. 
Literally the only Fatui member that gave me slight troubles with the Electro Hammer guy. But then again, that happens in every challenge, so that was expected. Scaramouche takes away our books, so we rush to the Yamiko because we know about Yai Publishing House, and Singcho loves new books. But instead, she takes us to some anti riding Shogun training, and then we meet... It's Sayu! At the Tenryo Commission building, we have to fight a bunch of Tenryo Commission soldiers, which wasn't difficult. After that, we have to fight Senora. In Phase 1, I didn't get frozen once, and it only took about 16 seconds to take down her HP in Phase 1. Phase 2 is more of the same in terms of easiness. She stops for a while to let you get attacks in on her, which makes Phase 2 easy. Lastly is the second Raiden Shogun fight, which was ridiculously easy. From the point I could start attacking her to the point where she stops the fight, Phase 2 only took just under 20 seconds. Hey, uh, I won. That was pretty easy. <laughs> that marks the end of Inazuma. Now we need to get to AR-35 to start Sumeru, and we also need to complete the Danes of Chasm quest. Both of those don't matter right now though, because we need to fight the Oceanid some more. I think the worst part about this fight is that it's not just a mindless focus on something else fight like for example the Pyro Regis Vine and Diluc only. For this I have to be focusing to deal the most possible damage. I also demonstrated how I did it to someone random who joined so that was fun. Here's a full speed last fight just so you know I wasn't cheating. With that done I can do the Chasm Danes of quest. Like the other Danes of quest nothing is really that difficult besides the Hydro Abyss Herald. The Hydro Abyss Mages were kind of annoying, but we had other Abyss Mages to be able to deal with them faster, and their shields are a lot weaker. The Hydro Herald felt like it was going down even slower than before, which was very annoying. Every other type of Abyss enemy was pretty easy, and that's the Danes of Quest complete. And completing it got us to AR-35, but before we start Sumeru we need to do the Ascension Domain, which was easy again. I did notice that I took down the last room of enemies a little bit slower, but it was only a little bit. Now I can start Sumeru. We get taken in by Kala and Tainari and later have to clear out a withering zone. Although all the fungi there were all hydro, it wasn't difficult at all. Later in the dream domain we only have to fight some hilly trolls because I was able to skip the first group of fungi. Because the enemy levels are starting to get higher, fights are starting to get a little bit more difficult. Not too much more difficult, but they're noticeably slower. Once we get out of there we go to Sumeru City and get our Akasha terminal and then go to Port Ormos and meet all Haytham. Later we buy some knowledge capsules from Dory, which we test out on some fungi who were quickly taken down. At the docks we fight some Aramites. I think I noticed one of Singcho's bigger problems, dealing with groups of enemies. Since Aramites move around a lot and get launched pretty easily, Singcho is never able to group them very well, so you have to slowly take them down one by one. That's Act 1 complete, and next is Act 2, which is mostly dialogue, so we're gonna skip to the only combat part in this quest. It was more Aramites, which were pretty easy. Now it's time for Act 3. We meet the Doctor and fight some Aramites in the forest. All we've been fighting for quite some time is just Aramites and they're never that hard. In the desert we finally get to fight something different, that being Rift Hounds. Because we heal ourselves a lot, the damage that we take from Corrosion is quickly healed away. We're back to fighting more Aramites at the start of this quest and this fight was kinda slow for reasons I've already mentioned. At the Elder's Awe Hospital, there were a bunch of Hilly Trolls and a Geo Law Troll, but you're not going to be able to see that because... I missed the Hilly Troll fight, fuck! For the Dendro Pillars, you can teleport away and get a Dendro Granum, and then quickly teleport back and rush to the Pillars. If you're just fast enough, you can get all three of them. Next is the King Deshra Domain. All enemies in there were Fungi, which aren't too hard to take down. Even the most annoying enemy in the game, the Dendro Flying Fungi, were being nice today. That's the end of Act 4. Act 5 starts with more Aramites. This one was the easiest group of them all because they only spawned in threes. Later at Part East DI, we have to fight a bunch of Fatui members. When the Electro Hammer guys spawned, I made sure to target them first to take them down faster because if I don't, they'll be really annoying. This didn't work for the second time though, so I still had to deal with this bitch. After a lot of plot, we can do the Deus Foundry. Every enemy in there are Fatui members, but none of them were really that difficult. Not even any of the Electro Hammer guys. After we're done with that domain, we can fight Scaramouche. Your judgment is as your existence. Unsubstantial. Phase 1 was a little slow, but it was of course easy. In Phase 2, we beat him probably the slowest of any of my accounts. Singjo literally couldn't do anything against the Nirvana engines, so we have to completely rely on the Neo Akasha terminal to deal our damage. Wasn't hard, just a little slow. After defeating him, we go to the polluted part of Ermansoul. The Rift Towns were easy once we got our burst, and on the boat were a bunch of Hilly Trolls and an Electro Law Troll. 
Something might have happened in the first phase. I am what the place. fuck was that shit? But beyond that, it was pretty easy. That's the end of Sumeru. Now I need to get to AR-40 to start Fontaine, as well as complete the next Dane's Lift quest, Kari Barrett. I decided to get Kari Barrett out of the way first. The only fight worth mentioning from this quest is the Cryo Herald fight. From the point it got its shield to the point where I defeated it, the fight took 5 minutes and 19 seconds. That's almost as bad as the Hydro Herald. Clearly Singto struggles with enemies that he can't use Hydro against effectively. Speaking of enemies you can't use Hydro against effectively, we had to fight Oceanid some more. I know I already said I wasn't going to fight them for AR-40, but it's clear that we need some more power, and this would give me some more AR. So right after completing Klee's and Venti story quest, I started to fight it. On the first fight, I got no flying birds, which was really nice. The second fight, I did get flying birds, so that brought me back down to reality. I actually got them twice during that fight, which absolutely sucked. But for every fight after this, I got no flying birds. Every other fight besides one that I've done against the ocean in this playthrough has gotten the flying birds, but now all of a sudden I don't get them? Before you ask, yes, I fucking hate this boss. A few domain runs later we're at AR-40 and we can start Fontaine. We meet the guy from Thomas and Friends at Romaritine Harbor and meet the person we stole our drip from. I don't really mention this, but because Singcho's Hydro, we can actually collect the Romaritine flowers. At the court of Fontaine, we meet Child who takes this battle for us. One Hydro supporting another Hydro, I guess. The rest of this act is just being a lawyer for Sir Topham Hat, which we don't need to cover. Act 2 is mainly focused around Navia, who is the best Fontaine character not named Nivellet. We're investigating the serial disappearances case, which lead us to this underwater domain. All enemies in here are Gardamax, and they were all pretty easy. I intentionally saved my burst for this room with a Pyro and Electro Gardamax so I could clear it pretty easily because I know this room can cause some trouble. We get this guy thrown in prison, but the Ortrice Mechanique Denalise Cardinal also convicts Child, so he goes to prison. Act 3 and 4 are all dialogue, so there's nothing really worth going over except for the fact that Sing Cho's in jail. And might I ask, what could he possibly do to go to jail? Well, he did once say he was gonna chop off Paimon's legs, so it's not completely far-fetched. Anyway, let's skip to Act 5. Act 5 starts with a tower domain. All fights in this domain were not too bad until the last floor of the tower. The last floor are two hilly troll rogues and a ruin guard. On my first attempt I died very fast, so on attempt 2 I tried to take them out in a specific order. I started with the hydro rogue because I thought he was the one that would give me most trouble. But it turned out it was actually the animal rogue that gave me the most trouble. His attacks were fast to come out and dealt a lot of damage, but once I took him out all that was left was the ruin guard. Which wasn't nearly as bad as the other two. With that fight done the tower domain is complete. Later in the Archon Quest, we put Farina on trial, which leads to the all-devouring narwhal barging into the Opera House and almost killing everybody. Child and Nivellet hold it back, Child gives us a thumbs down, and now Farina and Fossil are plot. But all I really care about is the three Hydro Gardamax, which were pretty easy. Now it's time to fight the all-devouring narwhal. Despite the fact that it has 70% Hydro resistance, it doesn't matter because we don't have to take down its HP. We only need to get eaten and then take down the all-devouring Shadow's shield. The narwhal is now defeated, and that's the end of Fontaine. That means we beat Genshin Impact using only Singcho. Five star. Finally. What is it gonna be? Hi there. I'm Tainari, forest watcher of the Avidia Forest. My duty is to preserve both the rainforest's ecosystem cool. and the safety. While there were a lot of stretches of this challenge where it was pretty easy, there were quite a bit of fights that were a struggle like the Ocean and Cryo Herald. I died four times in total, which I didn't expect when I had two forms of healing. Singcho is still a great character, it's just clear that he doesn't work well on his own. I was honestly surprised by how difficult this challenge was at certain points. I expected this to be one of the more easier ones. On the tier list of difficulty, I'm placing this at the bottom of kind of difficult, and on the solo tier list in the bottom of great, for the reasons I've already mentioned. Honestly, it would probably be even higher on the difficulty tier list if it didn't get a kill of Avonia. For the next challenge, I'll be doing Layla only. One of the best shielders in the game, but pretty lackluster when it comes to damage output. But until then, I'll leave you with that. Yeah.